Hi everyone, my name is Cody Shields. I am an Irish actress living in Vancouver, Canada. I moved to Vancouver from Derry City in the north of Ireland a couple of years ago to further my career in acting and I've absolutely loved the journey ever since. So I hope you guys love the show. Please watch and listen and have a great day. Bye. Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan for today. And what can I say? We have with the show the incredible, the amazing, badass, the superstar Cody. Cody, how are you today? Hi, I'm all good. How are you guys? Fantastic. And what better way to have an incredible badass morning than to be chatting with someone as badass as you? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah, I feel feel badass right now, actually, after you saying that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, before we start, I do want to thank those who are watching. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. Now, without further more, let's jump in. Now, for those who don't know who is the incredible, amazing, badass Cody, please tell us who you are. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Cody. I am from Derry City in Northern Ireland and I actually live in Vancouver right now. So I moved here a couple of years ago and that was mainly for my career in acting. Um, yeah, I've been a dancer my whole life. I love the industry and the arts and I just love being creative. And yeah, I feel as though being here has been a big journey. An amazing one for sure. I've definitely learned a lot of things, met a lot of amazing people. Um, I miss my family. That's always the only thing, I guess, when you like move away from home. And other than that, I'm just really excited to like be on here today and also talking about acting and the industry itself. I feel like it's been a big learning curve since I've moved here and I've learned a lot of things and I'm still learning. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. There you go. Incredible start. Now yeah. let's go back in time and tell me where this, yeah, like where this passion started, like what triggered it? Yeah, well, as I said, I've danced since I was three. And so I think performing, you know, I remember as a kid always putting like little plays on for like the fam or even I had two big sisters and it was really great. Like we would always just do different like little shows with each other and then being on stage, um, doing like a bit of theater and school and drama was amazing. I feel like once I got on a stage, I became like this whole new like little person. And so growing up, I always wanted to be an actress. It definitely was always there. I just kind of kept with my dance and that was always my main focus at the time. And then once I like stopped competing, I decided to do a degree, felt like that was the right kind of course and path for me to take. And once I finished my degree, I was very happy with what I did, but I was just still stuck and felt like, no, I don't think this is what I want to be doing right mm -hmm. now. I really do want to act. And the industry here in Vancouver, I knew was like very good and very upcoming. And my sister actually lived here. So I had visited her a couple of times and I just thought, why not? I have got a degree now in the background. Let's just go for it and give it like my best shot and kind of take that switch from dancing into the acting industry. And so, yeah, I moved here over three years ago, started taking classes right away. Was a bit of a journey because COVID also yeah, kicked of when I moved yeah. here. Um, but yeah, once like the kind of acting classes opened up again, I started taking classes, tried to get like a bit of experience on sets and started like doing some short movies and it's just been growing ever since. So yeah. I love it. I love it. Such such an experience. But tell me, how was the whole yeah, like how was the whole experience of, you know, moving to another country, but this time not for vacation, to actually trying to pursue something? Yeah, it's definitely been a journey in itself because like I said, it came when COVID began. So yeah. me and my partner thankfully moved together and I had my sister, which was really great help. So when we came, I think it was like three weeks later everything shut down in the world and I was just like okay where do we go from here and I took a minute just to like sit back and like talk with like my family being like okay look how long could we stay in Vancouver and um, right now just like wanting to like chase my dreams as an actress and try and get a job as well and like pay my way because it's an expensive city to live in yeah. and so yeah we stayed me and my partner we actually got jobs which was amazing and classes eventually opened up I think near the end of like 2020 start of 2021 and there was a lot of zoom ones as well so I had taken a couple of like zoom classes online but I think once everything started to open up again I did quite a few short movies in 2021 2022 which was really great just to like get that experience but then I unfortunately kind of had to like slow back a little bit because then I was waiting for my PR to come through yeah. and that was another process in itself because there was a backlog with like applications so that took a little bit longer than I expected so within that time I just started like doing a lot of classes and just like keeping myself fresh in the industry that way um, but yeah thankfully I got my PR there in Feb and I signed with an agent in March and I just feel like now this is like the time to like just 
get going again and just like really push myself so it's definitely been like up and down it's a bit yeah. of a roller coaster um but I wouldn't change it like I feel like I've been very lucky moving here and having the experience that I had even though COVID was here I still got to like live a great life uh, in the last couple of years and I'm just ready for like the next step yeah yeah I mean it's it's part of the experience right whenever you're pursuing something you like it's 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 expected to go up and down you know otherwise it would be yeah. you know it would be kind of a little bit boring let's say but anyway um now focusing a little bit on your acting career tell me how you managed to prepare a, a character of course that I understand that depends on the role but what are yeah like what is your initial approach let's say before you know jumping in into this whole uh, process of course yeah I think like yeah like you said depending on like the role you get if it's something like similar to yourself and maybe like some of your beliefs or habits it's a lot easier to kind of just like jump into some things yeah. if it's a character that comes in that I'm like okay that's just not me I take a little bit more time to like kind of develop that role or character um so yeah, like when the script comes in or the scene comes in, I'll like read it like once or twice just to kind of get a gist of like the whole kind of role in the scene together. And then if I have enough time, I might just like put it away for like the rest of the day, come back to it like that evening or a couple of hours. And then when I come back, that's kind of where I'll go into like a bit more like script analysis there. I will study the character, maybe what's her relationship to the person in the scene like did the breakdown give you like enough background or do you kind of need to like set one for yourself because mm -hmm. sometimes the breakdowns might not give you enough to be like okay what was her background maybe like what was her favorite thing growing up it just depends and so if you kind of have to like create that a little bit I think that's actually the fun side because you're getting mm -hmm. to like divulge into like this new role and character that's not like you and add that bit of like yourself into it um so yeah I'll do like that analysis of it I'll look at the scene itself and like see if there's any like objectives or obstacles that she's facing within it and then I'll like break down like her lines and do a little bit of like a thought process or an opinion she has between those lines and then once I kind of do that part that's when I go into the learning side of yeah. the lines and I think when you're doing that you actually pick up on the lines faster than you realize and so the more I kind of like just get into the analysis the more I'm like okay I'm picking up this line a little bit faster it feels a little bit more natural to say it this way or that way and then I kind of once I kind of get to that point again I'll put it away depending on like the time I have and then once I kind of get going on like learning the lines I'll do it walking about once I'm like walking to like the sky train I'll be like going through to my head people probably think I'm crazy because I'm like talking to myself with like my headphones in um mm. and I think yeah there's different ways to like do it for me uh learning lines has definitely been an easier process than I think I've kind of anticipated I felt like it might have been harder I can remember things I just try not to get like into the realm of like perfectionism because when you go too far into that that's when then like we kind of feel like we let ourselves die so I always just want to make sure that I don't go too hard and then try and find the middle ground of like enough analysis mm -hmm. and but yeah Oh, it's a whole roller coaster. I feel like every role or character you get, sometimes you'll work it different ways. And I'm still like learning that, I think, myself. Yeah. And now that now that you mentioned the whole part of not going too far, tell me, have you ever bring your characters home? And has that ever affected you in a negative way? Um, I've never like necessarily brought them home. I think what I've done is if I got if I've had a bad day in a class or maybe like an audition didn't feel like I Kind of done it the way I expected myself to which is that perfectionism yeah, of course. Um, I think that's what I kind of dwell on a little bit when I don't want to and it's remembering just to like it's been done it's over with there's nothing I can change about it now other than learn from it and grow from it and so I think that's more where that comes into is like you know if you have a bad day it's fine bad days are going to happen we're not all going to be perfect one day or the other and that's yeah. also like the learning process of acting is not every day is going to be this like great I had a great scene today um and so yeah I think that's what I kind of need to remember is let that stay in class or let that stay in the zoom call if it didn't go to the greatest then it's okay let's move forward and just learn from it mm -hmm. I can understand that now tell me like what is your goal you know like um like what is the thing that you want to achieve when you're about to perform and you want the audience to realize about your performance I think one of the main things that I'm always trying to remind myself is to have fun I think sometimes we forget that 
you know, we're supposed to enjoy this journey as well as like going up there and yeah, like being something different. Like at the end of the day, we're getting to be characters that are predominantly not ourselves. We might have small things in there that like represent a little bit of us, but I think, yeah, have fun, enjoy being able to be a different character, something that you wouldn't personally do in your life. And in my dancing career, it was something that I kind of, when I got a little bit older, forgot to do was like mm-hmm. go up on stage and just enjoy dancing. And so I always try to remind myself now in my acting side of things to just be like, no, enjoy it, enjoy every class, learn from it, go on stage. If it's in the class and we're doing like our final performance at the end of the six weeks, don't like kind of get into the nerves and like the scared side of it. Like, oh God, what if this doesn't go okay? Go out there, give it your best. And at the end of the day, when you're having fun, everybody else I think is having fun. Mm -hmm. And so that always like kind of resonates. And at the end of it, you just feel so happy within yourself. You're just like, yes, I did that. Let's do it again. And that's the feeling I always want to have at the end of anything I do where I just want to do it again. And that's when you know you're like enjoying it and having a blast. Yeah, it's true. I mean, whenever, yeah, like whenever you are thinking about something, I mean, whenever you're doing something, Mm -hmm. if you if you just are doing it for fun, you know, without taking too much attention to it, you know, you're just doing it because you love it. It tends to be more, yeah, I would say perhaps like original or more um, unique. You know what I mean? Yeah, I believe that. I think think you're more natural and true to yourself as well, and a lot of the time when you kind of just relax and be yourself, that's when like the fun will come out and the characters will kind of, I think, evolve a lot more than you expect. Mm. Um, Because we all have like our little toolboxes and I know there's things that some of us like prefer to do than others. But when you're just having fun, I feel as though that resonates a lot through your performance and then the audience definitely feels that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end, you want to make your character as as, uh, relatable as possible, right? You want to make it real honest right so i can understand that that um that you want to kind of enjoy it i mean we sometimes see it right whenever like whenever we we are seeing like this character either in a tv show yeah. film play that it wasn't honest you know that it was just doing it for you know like like to get a paycheck get it done and that's it you tend to yeah. feel it instantly you know and there are those that you are suddenly feeling this connection of how honest it, it was uh it was made at the end you know oh yeah for sure like and even with like some of the scenes I know we can do like emotional scenes and I've done a couple of them in class or like on auditions and after it like you still have the sense of like it's weird I cried my heart out in that scene but I still enjoyed it mm-hmm. and I think it's because sometimes you know as actors we have all these emotions and we want to just like kind of bring them up and be like yes emotions um and at the end of the day like when we kind of get those hard scenes and when we do like conquer that like emotion of we have the resistance at the start and then we finally get to it yeah. it also just has that like feeling of like wow I got there that was so much fun I can do it again and so yeah I think that's when you see it as well in like tvs and shows is when it's so true and you can see that tears aren't forced and that they're very real that I'm like mm-hmm. I can relate to that yeah absolutely and tell me is there any kind of role that you would refuse to play? Maybe, you know, maybe because of the, the type of message or the way that it or the way that it's built is not something that you believe in. Yeah, I have never really like thought about it. I think in the industry, a lot of people will get roles um that are very hard and maybe completely different to themselves, like playing the villain and things like that. And I think for those people that do it and do it very well, we're very lucky because then it's given us tv that we can watch and actually relate to sometimes like about our lives or maybe what's going on so I've never thought of it in a sense of like okay what would come in that I would say no to Mm. um so I think like if ever a role came in that I was just like okay that's not me I don't think I could like push myself to that point I would say like okay maybe not today but I also do want to challenge myself as an actress and I feel as though I would give it my best if something came in, if it was playing a villain or somebody that just was completely not me, I would give it a shot. And if it got to the point where I was like, this is just too much, I don't know if I could go through with it, then I would like to think that I could say to myself, Cody, step back. Today's just not the day for this one, you know? And I think it's more of those roles that, yeah, are a little bit more emotionally involved you know where you are playing maybe like a villain or a victim. Mm -hmm. And you might not have like that kind of, relatableness to it like you know it might not have been something that's happened in your life so having to try and find your way in that also can be hard so yeah yeah, I'm 
excited for challenges to come in my door and see how it goes. But I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Yeah. Tell me, like, what are some of the things that you that you enjoy the most about the whole acting profession? Oh, there's so many. Honestly, I think just being different people, different characters, really allowing myself to have fun in that area and be silly. I think, you know, as a teenager and in drama classes, I remember like not wanting to do things that were weird or silly in front of like my friends and be kind of more reserved. And I think now the older that I've gotten, I'm just like, no, let's be silly. Let's be dramatic and creative. And in class, it's so much fun to like do scenes 10 different ways to just see how they can go. And I love that part of it as well, because I never really thought that one scene could go like 10 different ways, which it really can. You know, everyone has their own perspective and opinions and seeing how that can happen or how a scene can develop in like coming weeks in a class or on set yeah it's just been really magical and then being on set too I think that first time I ever was on set was just an experience in itself you know just seeing the setup seeing how things come together and then the final product I was just like wow that just it takes a village and I'm so thankful to be in this industry right now and get to experience that and just meeting so many amazing people oh my god there's just a list that I could like talk about all day um yeah. but yeah I've met a lot of amazing people in the industry as well like my best friends and I feel like there are people that I'm going to know for like the rest of my life and I'm very like lucky and grateful being here in Vancouver that I've got to meet so many amazing mm -hmm. people from like all around the world it's such a cultural place here and yeah, oh, the list can go on, but definitely I think that's like my top kind of aspects from being in the industry and mm -hmm. my favorite things so far. Let's say that you that <laughs> there's one thing that you could change about the whole acting industry, you know, that you have that that, that you have the opportunity to change one thing. What yeah. would it be? That's a tough one because I feel like I'm still learning and I have yeah. I'm still gaining so much experience. Um I think for now, I know there's the writer strike going on and I really hope that like they can come to an agreement for the writers because I feel as though I love what they're fighting for, you know, um, and I feel like I want to learn more about it as well because I'm so fresh into this industry yeah. um, the last couple of years that I'm still trying to like learn about what is the strike for and what is everyone kind of like talking about and then myself as well as like a female actress, you know, I just want to kind of have fun and just make sure that you know when I am on set that I am being treated um just like I have a voice I think you know at the end of the day it's okay to be able to say no or to have a voice and say like can mm -hmm. I try it this way or maybe can I just like have a minute to myself if like a scene has been really emotional and I think that's something the industry is allowing more of you know instead of just being like okay cut next one mm -hmm. you know if you have an emotional scene give somebody that moment to just like come out of it give them a second just to like relax and bring themselves back in to like move to that next scene um so I think yeah there's a couple of things that are evolving and developing definitely and for me I just think it's allowing people to have a voice and not say that they're being you know passive aggressive or this yeah. person had to work with just because they have an opinion or a voice that's not it you know we're all there just to like make magic and do the same job and yeah I think that's it really just have fun just make movie magic and go from there yeah yeah i can understand that too i mean i would i would appreciate or i would like if there would be like more communication between the audience and the whole act i mean actors directors producers, i mean like the whole crew that are responsible for making you know any type of project because i, I do think that for those who have, who have yeah who don't know anything about it right we just yeah. will watch, you know, like the usual watcher, you know, we'll watch a film here and there, a TV yeah. show, you know, don't actually care. But like once you start to, yeah, like once you start to discover a little bit about the whole situation behind it, you start to, you you start to realize that there's a lot of topics that should be discussed. Yeah. Uh, be, you know, uh, for some, uh, uh, for some actors that I've interviewed, some, uh, some of them will tell me that they will be working sometimes for a, for a project. 12 yeah. 14 hour shift you know yeah. like basically your whole day you are stuck in there things like that which sure. i get it at the same time but you know at least it would be it would be nice if we could have like this if we if everyone will will get like involved to this mm -hmm. you know i mean at the end of the day is your passion but it's a job you know what i yeah. mean 
I get so, that. It is it is a job and that's it. Like at the end of the day, we all hear and we all are so passionate about acting. But we do have a life and we have a body that we need to take care of totally. and also like cherish and nourish. And so I get that when I hear people that's on set, you know, for like those long days and overnight shoots, I'm like, wow, that's yeah. a lot. And so I think it needs to be not even more people taken care of, but just understanding that you need to take care of yourself as well within this industry and also know your limits and definitely yeah. find those limits as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get it that sometimes they will, do, they will be working those type of hours to kind of release that project as soon as possible, you know, especially yeah. if uh, if it is a sequel to something, you know, because mm -hmm. people people is on the hype to it. They can't stand yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. You know, but <laughs> I, I mean, uh, at the end, as I was saying, it's a job and it would be nice if at least us, the audience would be like, you know what, if if a project is going to take years, go for it. I mean, you know, yeah. take your time, but make sure it's good mm -hmm. because sometimes we will see it in a ton of time, you know, that yeah. the that the project was rushed and you don't even enjoy it you know you're yeah. like like what the hell am i watching you know or like things like that so like the whole patience to it you know that that it is a process let's give them all the time they they need you know so they can make a real actual you know a real actual project let's make yeah. it happen you know so i agree with that for sure because i think too i've seen a lot of tv shows where they've taken a couple of years in between like stranger things and stuff like that and at the end of the day you see the kids develop and the characters grow And it also, yeah, it makes for good writing and good picture. And at the end of the day, it's allowing the kids and the people and the cast and the set, the whole crew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to develop it right and do it yeah, the right way. And at the end of the day, you know, people are like having that anticipation, just constantly waiting for it to come out. And that's always going to grow. And mm -hmm. that's why then they get so high ratings because it's like, it's done right. The anticipation was there. Everybody was so excited. And it's like, boom, like we knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And uh, moving on here, tell me, like, let's say, you know, that one day I call you and I tell you that I want to become an actor. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the catch. I don't know anything about, I mean, it's your experience, right? Yeah. So based on what you know, what do you think it would be important for me to start? Like a good place for me to be like, okay, let you should start here. Yeah. Well, I was there myself. Like for me, acting, I had zero experience really in it I had done like a self-documentary a couple of years ago and saw a little bit of like what it's like having cameras around and sets but realistically with the film and tv industry I was brand new um and so for me first thing I started to do was look for classes where do I want to start doing classes I need to obviously brush up on like my techniques like from yeah. what I did in drama in school I need to figure out the difference between theater and film and television as well because that is a big difference So yeah, I started looking for classes. I find a great um, acting studio here that I love to go to, AMAW. And so yeah, I went there. They have their foundations course. And when I got there, that was like the big step and like the right direction for me because it was a really comfortable studio. I felt like as an actress, I could grow in this place and I also felt safe. Um, and I think that's also very important is like feeling safe to allow yourself to grow as an actress or an actor and develop yourself and your tools and what you can do in scenes. Um, and then from there, I think it's also learning a little bit about the kind of technical side to things, you know, I also had to learn all the language of like what they would say on a set. Um, and so gaining, so I gaining that experience through applying for like some short films um, for like student short films allowed me to really understand that like on set when they say certain like techniques like rehearsal or mm -hmm. just certain things that you're like, oh, okay, yeah. what does that mean? So that was a big experience for myself as well to just gain that kind of knowledge and understand a lot of the things that go on in sets. And I think once you can kind of start on that base and then it's developing into, you know, getting an agent. And that was a process in itself because I remember talking to like a couple of friends saying like, look, there's a lot of agencies here in Vancouver, but there's also a lot of actors. So it is tough to get one. And you want to make sure that you get one that is like willing to work with you and excited to work with you and, you know, might not have like a couple of people on their roster like you. So that process was one in itself. You know, I went on to Vancouver's Actors Guide, looked at all the agency lists, went on to IMDb Pro. I would like look at their rosters and if they had a big roster and I thought, okay, they probably aren't taking anyone on right now, then I would just leave it. And I think I just kind of built my list from there as well. And I did a lot of research into that. 
So I feel like for the last couple of years, I've definitely done my like due diligence with, you know, doing my research into the industry, mm-hmm. getting an agent, um, classes. It is a process. And if you're willing to put in the time, the money and the effort, then you're on the right way and just keep pushing yourself. And that's kind of like the basis of like where I started and um, what I would probably say to like somebody else who that's like completely brand new. There you go. I told you what, if I ever become an actor and I win an award for best actor, I'll be mentioning you in my thank you speech. Thank you very much. I'll take that on board. <laughs> you got it. I mean, I even, I'll tell you what, I will, I will even cut the trophy in half so you can have half of it. And I will have <laughs> this one started my career. <laughs> yeah. I will be like, yeah. without this half of it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to start, you know? So. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a journey, you know, and I think everyone um, has their own ways of like getting into it. Um, yeah. But it definitely like having somebody that may know a couple of things or can help you along the way definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end, and, and also I think there's this, there is like this huge miscommunication because for some people acting, it's all about the money, you know, the glam, the parties, fashion, you know, things like that. Yeah. And and it's like you just load your lines and you're good to go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, one, uh, as I was saying before, like once you get the chance to kind of dig up a, a little bit about it, you discover there is this huge amount of things that you need to actually be doing in order to, yeah, know, to uh, to be in a fit, you know, in a fit position, let's say to to uh, to perform. But mm-hmm. also, I mean, it, and this is yeah, like it happens every time, right? That sometimes we will have like this huge. Uh, uh, this huge project with this huge list of eight actors but between those there is this new one you know new one let's say that that nobody knew and then and then, and then it's like oh it's success overnight but yeah. once you but once you take a look on this on this a person's career you're like are you kidding me i mean they they have been acting for already 15 20 years you know what yeah. i mean so it's so funny what I know, it is, it's, it's crazy how long it can take to like get to that point and I think it's something that I have to remind myself every day is, you know, I'm not in this industry to be the best or be the star. I'm in it because I just simply love to act. I I love to be creative and be artistic and just be able to like divulge into like new characters and roles. And I have to like remind myself, you know, like at the end of the day, certain roles will come into your life. Certain ones might not. And you just have to like take your wins, even if you Mm -hmm. feel like they're small, take every win that you get. Some auditions you might think went absolutely amazing and then, you know, you might not get the role and that's fine. Like the person just might not be looking for you that day. The casting just might see someone that like fits the role to like their liking and that's absolutely no problem. If you've done your best, that's all you can do. And it's just like, let's move on, on to the next one and just go from there. And I think it's something that, yeah, a lot of new people maybe in the industry kind of forget is like they put so much pressure like oh I really wanted that rule or you know I give it the best why did I get it and it's like you know you might have given it your best and it could have been an amazing audition it just might not be what Caston was looking for totally. at that point and that's okay totally I love it that is awesome now let's say that one day Netflix HBO Max Disney Plus I mean you name it right I mean <laughs> I think everyone has a streaming exactly. service right now right but anyway <laughs> Uh, let's say that they call you and they tell you to have this idea, which goes, they're going to make a film mm-hmm. in which all of the characters you have played at the moment, all of them, they're okay. all going to gather to celebrate your birthday. But here's the thing. The film needs a name. So how should we call it? Oh. Wheel of Fortune. No, I think that's like a TV show already. Yeah, it's a TV show already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of something of a wheel because every character i've played recently has been very different i don't think mm. i've played like two of the same so i feel yeah, like, yeah. like i can feel like a wheel of some sort like mm. mystery wheel or wheel of life yeah wheel of life that's a good one i like that one because yeah, yeah. be every single like yeah role i played has been very different and they've all been um not like necessarily myself actually i feel like i've played things that have been a little bit out of sight of my comfort zone which i really enjoy yeah. and yeah, I feel like that's a good one, real of life, because yeah. the wheel, see which life you get, and it would be a fun one to see. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. What about describing your whole career at, at this moment? But you know what? This time on a meal, you know? Meal. What that's... would it have? What would it have? Okay. I'd have a steak, because yeah. one of my characters is very strong-willed. 
feel like steak just like represents that totally. um, something sweet as well because I definitely feel as though like my personality comes out in some things like very sweet mm -hmm. <laughs> I also have a very sweet too um okay. and then I think something what would what's something you would eat that is like very unexpected that you wouldn't like you know you think you would like it and then you eat it and you're just like no hmm. like Some, something you wouldn't eat at all something that you would that looks good but then you eat it and you're just like that is disgusting there yeah. was like one character I played um, and like she looks sweet and innocent on the outside but inside it's bitter and it's like very mm. feisty yeah. and, you know and I feel like it's something like that um, that you would think looks really nice to eat and then you eat it and you're just like nope like cucumber for me I think cucumber looks great and in a salad I'm like I would love to eat cucumber then I put it in my mouth and I'm automatically just like no get that I'd get that I'd, I don't like that yeah. and so I feel like that's kind of something that would be in there is looks tasty and sweet and then you put it in your mind and you're just like nope that's not interesting me. interesting combination yeah. Okay. okay yeah I don't know it's a funny one I've never thought of like putting anything like that into a meal form um but it would definitely be a very random meal it'd be a steak with something sweet and nasty with something bitter um and then, yeah again a little bit of like a roulette in there eating and things different and what will be the name of that dish? Mm. Help me out here, Dad. What do you think? Mm. Um, eat at your risk. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> interesting. Eat at yeah. your risk. Eat at your okay. risk. Yeah. I'll take I it. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. And I will just remove the nasty part and keep it. There you go, but you don't know if it's nasty until you try it, so. Good point. That's a good point. <laughs> so it is. Eat at your risk. <laughs> there you go. Now, let's say that we're going to make a film about this episode we just did right now. But you know what is going to happen. We need the title of it. So how okay. should we call it? Um, One Stop Show with the Badass Cody. <laughs> I okay. don't know. Okay. Maybe. Um, you just kept calling me badass at the start, and it really stuck. I liked it. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I don't know. The show has been fun. I feel like we've like learned a lot, so it's also been. I think mm. I've definitely talked about a lot of things I've learned in the industry as like a kind of newer actor. So I mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. something along those lines as well would be good. Like, take your time. Oh, so this is final. If I say a name, this is gonna be final. Is this what we're gonna call the show? Maybe. No, just kidding. Maybe. Um, um, mm. Perhaps we could call it. I mean, I'm trying to mix the whole "eat at your risk" and "wheel of, and wheel of life." Yeah. But nothing good come comes at it right then. So <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh God! Mm. Living the life. Living the life. You want to take it as that, or? I, well, I'm like living my best life. You know, I feel like right now I'm living the life as an actor and an actress in my way, and this is like how I explain it in the interview and in the podcast right now. Mm. I feel like I'm living the life. And living the life. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good one, maybe. Because um, that's gonna be the title of this video. Okay. Cool. Living the life. life. Yeah, living the life of Cody. <laughs> There we go. All right. I'll take it. I like it. And my last question. Tell me, like, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that we just want to quit. You know, it's mm -hmm. inevitable. So how you manage to get back up? I definitely have an amazing support system. I am a very lucky person. Like, my family, you know, have always been there for me. Um, My boyfriend here as well. Like, I feel as though having that group and community of people that just motivate you and also remind you that you know you are worth it and don't give up on yourself because I've heard a lot of people saying oh like your parents are happy with you being an actor and I'm like yeah like why wouldn't they be and they're like oh like they might not see it as like a job that's gonna you know make money and this and that and I'm like well I have a degree I also am living my best life 
and they are always saying if you're happy then we're happy and being creative has always been a big thing in my family actually like my mom's a dressmaker um my sister's danced and you know I've just had this like whole kind of family of being creative and I think because I in the acting industry it is a tough one I have an amazing support system and that really motivates me to be like okay I can do this and I'm gonna keep going and prove to myself that you know I'm doing this for the right reasons and that one day it'll be all worth it and it is already and I think that's what also like motivates me is that every bit of the journey is a learning curve it's also a fun part and it's always going to progress you to the next step and so I always just think to myself okay well then what's the next step for tomorrow um what do I want to learn now in the next week what about this class next month you know just take every kind of thing as a win when you book roles if you feel like it's oh that's only a small role no it's not you booked a role Mm. that's amazing Mm. and so for me yeah motivating myself every day is just getting up taking every day as a win and just thinking okay what can I do better tomorrow let's just keep moving forward and my family yeah I'd be lost without them so I'm very like lucky for that and my boyfriend James here he's just been a huge big support and like my biggest like fan he's always just like okay do you need help with the scene you want me to run lines with you and that's always just been great because I'm like okay perfect sounds good and I'm like can you pause there for a second and he's like uh okay do you want me to pause for like five seconds I'm like no just quick pause um so yeah your support system is definitely one of the biggest things that you can have especially as an actor I think and yeah that's it there you go Dropping the mic. The mic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end, what can I say? You know, the fact that you're pursuing your passion, I mean, I, as easy as it may sound, we all know that it's not, and it's a pain in the yeah, pain in the butt sometimes. That it will oh, take yeah. you to that it will take you to very dark places to be like, you know what, I'm done, I'm going, you know, I'm just gonna quit. I, I have it. been there, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I've had moments of self-doubt where I thought, you know, is this worth it? I'm so, putting yeah. myself through a lot, like also, you know, having the opportunity to like go for my acting right now and not like necessarily get in income and like work in a nine to five job you do have those moments being like gosh like is this what I want to do like am I on the right totally. path and I think those little moments of doubt you're just kind of like nope switch it off I absolutely love acting and when you go to a class it just reminds you of that or when you're on set again you're just like ah this is why I'm here again and so you just have to push past those little times with like a little bit of self-doubt and just remind yourself, why are you here? Whether that's like every morning, having like a little list of affirmations, reminding yourself what you're doing and just keep pushing. That definitely is like, yeah, you got to do that. You'll have your moments of yeah. like those ugh, bad days and got to push forward and just keep moving. And it sounds a lot easier than it is. But again, once you do it the first time, it gets easier every time after that. Yeah, you know, I've I've been trying to kind of focus on this idea that it's a process. You know, it's a marathon. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take time. Sure, it's gonna take time, but enjoy yeah. it. You know, I mean, exactly. if you if you push yourself too much or if you focus on on this on the destination, let's say, which yeah. is totally understandable, but if you focus only on that, you're not gonna you're not gonna be present on the you know during during the journey here and at some point when you get to the destination it's not gonna i mean you perhaps you perhaps you wouldn't even know that you are already in your destination you know what i mean that i get you yeah yeah i mean i would i've been trying to have like this idea of not getting stressed if i'm not getting the results that i wanted you know yeah oh and i get that actually you know? and quite a lot mine's is a matter of like I as a kid down seven days a week had competitions at the weekend and so when I moved to like Vancouver and I obviously had time to like relax a day or have like a seat on the sofa and watch a bit of tv I always had to remind myself not to get angry at that and just allowing your body to like unwind because yeah the journey is going to be long it's going to be hard it's going to be tough and if you're willing to put in all that time and effort don't kind of like get down on yourself on them days where you're having a minute to yourself because that's when you just allow yourself to recuperate and have a little bit of like downtime and that is definitely needed as well and I've realized that myself I'm always trying to remind myself okay it's fine for like a couple of hours to sit on the sofa after a long day of work or in class or on set don't panic about that like just enjoy it and then the next day get up and go again that's all good yeah there you go and that's how the cookie crumbles. I mean, as I was saying, uh, Cody, at the beginning, I mean, you're a total badass, you know, and now we know why. So that's that's the whole point of it, you know. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we, badass after this. Thank you for all that. There you go. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, keep doing what you do because I do think that it's incredible. I do think that it's amazing the fact that you move from from another country to to a totally new one, you know, to a, uh, to a whole different continent here, and you're making it happen. I mean, and you are showing results, and you are showing people most important that dreams come true. I think that's the most valuable lesson here: that it doesn't matter where you're from, or what's your language, culture, whatever. I mean, if you have a passion for it, you can actually make it happen. Of course, that it's gonna take time, and it's gonna be annoying, and it's gonna be stressing at some point. Yes, but that's. That's that's life. So suck it up, you know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, everything's gonna be the same no matter what industry you're in. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, keep killing it, keep being this incredible, of amazing, of a badass person you always are. But also, I want to thank those who watch this. Thank you so much. Um, now, on the description below, you're gonna find uh, Cody's social media. Let's follow her. Let's make her viral. Hashtag Team Cody because she's <laughs> incredible. She's amazing here. And Cody, again, thank you so much. Keep doing what you do. Keep inspiring people. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure to be on your show, Dan. It was really great to meet you as well. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right.